Welcome to Bible Logos. My name is Laura Worcester and I'm your broadcast host today. I'm excited to introduce part one of the message, I'm Not Mad At You. Please like and share this message on social media with your in friends and family. All right, here is part one of I'm Not Mad At You. Verses 23 and 24 from the New King James Version of the Bible. And we're going to follow that with Mark chapter 11, verses 24 through 26 of the Bible, also from the New King James Version. Those passages of Scripture read as follows. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Mark 11, verse 24 through 26 say, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, but if you do not forgive, as saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled as you think you are. If you do not forgive, neither, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Before you take your seat, just look at two or three people and tell them, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> These two passages of Scripture, the one from Matthew chapter 5 and the other from Mark chapter 11, when we put those together, we see that there's no way out or no way around it, whether I am the offender or whether I am the offendee. God wants me to do my very best to be reconciled with my brothers and with my sisters. Rick Warren says over in the What on Earth Am I Here For book at page 153, speaking of restoring broken fellowship, since Christ wants his family to be known for our love for each other, broken fellowship is a disgraceful testimony to unbelievers. Let me read that again. Since Christ wants his family to be known for our love for each other, broken fellowship is a disgraceful testimony. That's some harsh words, aren't they? To unbelievers. Well, where is he coming from when he says that God, what's his premise for the fact that he state or his statement that God or Christ wants his family to be known for our love for each other. The premise for that is found in the gospel according to St. John, verse 13, 34 and 35, which also from the New King James Version of the Bible read as thus. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Look at verse 35. Verse 35 says, by this, 
By what? By this love. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He says, how is it that people know that you are my disciples? Because you have love one for another. Notice, he didn't say because you came to church today. That's how people know that you're my disciple. You notice that? He didn't say that. He didn't say because I grew up in church. Very first memories that I have, some of us, are in church. He didn't say that was how people would know that you are his disciple. He didn't say because you, are a, you pray on the prayer line every time it's open. If the prayer line is on, I'm, I'm there and faithful and committed. He didn't say that's how people will know that you are his disciple. He didn't say because of your love for study of the word of God. He didn't even say that would be the reason that people would know that you are his disciple. Do you realize you can have some Bible scholars who don't like Jesus? Some of us went to school with a whole bunch of Bible scholars who don't believe anything about the Christ. So he didn't use any of those as the gauge to measure whether we are his disciples. He said the way that people will know, and that includes me, the way that I will know that I am his disciple is if I for can forgive somebody who messed over me. Welcome back. We are just getting started, but I'm already excited about this word. Tune in tomorrow for part two of the message, I'm Not Mad At You. And don't forget to like it and share it with your friends and family. I am Laura Worcester and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.